now we can look at some limiting reactant problems. So we're going to apply some of the principles of stoichiometry to kind of a, a real life situation. So suppose you were making sandwiches. All right, so you're making sandwiches, an itchy sandwich, and one sandwich is made of um, two pieces of bread plus one piece of cheese, and that gives you one sandwich. Okay, now, um, depending on how much bread and cheese I have is gonna determine how many sandwiches I make. So suppose I had uh, 10 pieces of bread and five pieces of cheese. Well, if I had, consider each reactant individually. So if I had 10 pieces of bread, I know that there are two pieces of bread for every one sandwich, right? So I can compare that. This is stoichiometry, I can compare two pieces of bread for every one sandwich. Those are my, my conversion factor there. Um, that's gonna give me you know, five sandwiches. And if I had five pieces of cheese and I put one piece of cheese for every one sandwich, I'm gonna end up with five sandwiches. So this is called the stoichiometric mix. It means I run out of both reactants at exactly the same time. But what would happen if I had 10 pieces of bread and you know, seven pieces of cheese? Well, 10 pieces of bread, we already know from up here, right? For every um, one sandwich, I need two pieces of bread, so I'd get five sandwiches. If I had seven pieces of cheese, um, for every uh, one piece of cheese, I can make one sandwich. I can get seven sandwiches, right? So if I if I used up all 10 pieces of bread, I'd make five sandwiches. If I used up all seven pieces of cheese, I would make seven sandwiches. So how many sandwiches do I actually make? The lesser amount. Because as soon as I use up all um, 10 pieces of bread, the sandwich making process is over. Um, and I can only use up you know, five pieces of cheese for 10 pieces of bread. So I end up with some of the um, some of the cheese in excess. I'll have two pieces of cheese left over. That's how much I have in excess, right? Cheese is in excess and bread is called the limiting reactant. It limits how many products I can make. So in this example, right? Well, always what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our reactant, compare it to the products, take this reactant, compare it to the products. And then whichever one gives you the smaller amount of products, uh, is called the limiting reactant. Whichever reactant gives you the smallest amount of products is the limiting reactant. It limits how many products you can make. So down here is, is kind of like another picture of what's going on. Um, if you had hydrogen and oxygen and you're making water, um, the, let's see, hydrogen is the white ones and the oxygen, are, those are the, the red ones. Um, so just kind of look at this conceptually or visually. Uh, on the product side, you have some leftover oxygen. So hydrogen is what limits. Hydrogen is your limiting reactant. As soon as you run out of all of the hydrogen, then the reaction is over, and whatever you have left over is, is what you have left over. So you have some um, oxygen in excess in this case, and hydrogen would be your limiting reactant. So now we can do something that looks a little bit more like chemistry. Um, we have this reaction, uh, you're converting uh, nitrogen in the air into nitrogen-containing compounds. So we have this reaction, nitrogen plus hydrogen gives you some NH3, some ammonia. And they want to know moles. How many moles of nitrogen can be formed from three moles of nitrogen and three moles of hydrogen? So um, in the problems that we did before, you only had like one reactant or the amount of one reactant. Now you have two, and you don't know which one is the limiting reactant. You, you need to figure that out. So um, since we're just comparing moles to moles, we can use the stoichiometry directly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off with three moles of nitrogen, and I have six moles of hydrogen, and I'm just going to compare moles of nitrogen to moles of ammonia using the stoichiometry. So I have one mole of nitrogen, right? Cause I have a, you know, one in front of this, that's my stoichiometric coefficient. And I have two moles of ammonia. And so when I work that out, I get six moles of ammonia. So that really means if I used up all of, all three moles of this nitrogen, I would get six moles of ammonia. If I'm starting off with six moles of hydrogen for every three moles of hydrogen, I make two moles of ammonia. So that's gonna give me four moles of ammonia. So how much ammonia do I actually make? The smaller amount. 
Um, so after I make four moles of ammonia, the reaction stops. I used up all of my, my hydrogen, so this is my limiting reactant. And the one I have in excess is N2. And my final answer is I make four moles of ammonia. So you take your reactant, convert it to the product, take this reactant, convert it to the product, compare your products, and whichever, one, whichever reactant gives you the smallest amount of your product, that's your limiting reactant, and then you always make the smaller amount of your product. So this was an easy moles to moles conversion. You can also do a similar type of problem when you're starting off with um, grams. So in this case, we have zinc, we have some silver nitrate, we're making silver and um, silver and uh, silver and zinc nitrate. Um, when you're doing stoichiometry, remember you can compare reactants to products and products to reactants. In a limiting reactant kind of problem, they usually give you the uh, two the amounts of two reactants, either in moles or grams. If it's in grams, then you're going to have to do make our molar mass sandwiches again. You're going to have to go from grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. Again, how do you go from grams to moles? You need a molar mass. How do you go from moles to moles? You have the chemical equation. And then how do you go from moles to grams? That's another molar mass. Um, so for these problems, right, we're starting off here with two grams of zinc, uh, zinc metal, place an aqueous solution containing 2.5 grams of silver nitrate. Here's the reaction. And the first thing they want to know is how much silver do you form? So I'm going to put a box around silver because that's where I'm going first. So I basically want to take the zinc, the, the, the mass of zinc, and then figure out the mass of silver, the mass of zinc nitrate, and then figure out the mass of silver. And whichever one gives you gives me the least amount of silver um, is you know, my final answer. So I'll start over here with, we have two grams of zinc, and I'm gonna go grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. And I also have 2.5 grams of the silver nitrate. We have grams to moles, moles to moles, moles to grams. So I need a whole bunch of molar masses in order to do this problem. I'm going to need the molar mass of the zinc, I'm going to need the molar mass of the silver nitrate, and I'm going to need the molar mass of the silver. So silver and zinc are easy to find. Those are from the periodic table. Molar mass of zinc is what, 64, oh sorry, 65.4 grams. Um, silver 107.8 grams and then the silver nitrate again that's going to be silver plus nitrogen plus three times oxygen at this point you should be able to you know pause the video calculate that on your own silver nitrate ends up being about 169.8 grams all right so if i'm starting here with the grams of um, i want to end up in with uh, grams of silver grams of silver in both cases. So I'm trying to get to grams of silver over here. So I'm gonna go from grams of zinc to one mole of zinc. I'm gonna go from moles of zinc to moles of silver. I'm gonna go one mole of silver to grams of silver. So again, I have a molar mass here. I have a molar mass here. And then what goes in front of these moles comes from the, from the chemical equation. So the molar mass of zinc is 65.4. And remember, molar mass is always a whole bunch of grams per one mole. So a whole bunch of grams related to one mole. Um, now moles to moles, I have one, right, one zinc. I have two silvers. And over here, I want the molar mass of the silver, which is 107.8. And when you work all that out, put all that in your uh, well, put all that in your calculator. You're going to have two times two times one oh seven point eight, and on the bottom divided by sixty five point four, you should get six point five nine. Set up something similar over here. You're going to have grams of silver nitrate per mole of silver nitrate, and then you'll have moles of silver nitrate per moles of silver, okay, because you're going to the same product. And then I have moles of silver and I have grams of silver. So this last part is going to be the same on, on both of these. Um, so I have my molar mass, moles to moles, and then a molar mass. So here I want the molar mass of the silver nitrate. I'm starting with AgNO3. 
So on the bottom here, I have 169.8 grams. And then moles to moles, I have two moles of silver nitrate, two moles of silver, two to two. So if you skipped that mole to mole part, you'll get the same answer, but I'm still gonna take off points if you don't show that. So it's just, you need to show that mole to mole conversion. And then over here you have grams to moles. So you need to show all your work, I guess that's what I was trying to say. And then over here you have 107.8 grams. And when you work that out, again, this is how you're gonna do it in your calculator. Do it in step by step. 250 times two times 107.8 divided by uh, 169.8 times two. So get a number on the top, number on the bottom, top over bottom should give you 1.5 nine when you round up so it should be like 1.587 round that up to 1.59 grams and then you compare your final answer so if i used up all two grams of zinc i would get 6.59 grams of silver if i used up all 2.5 grams of silver nitrate i get 1.59 grams of, of silver so i make the lesser amount so as soon as i make 1.59 grams of silver in this process, I'm all out of the silver nitrate. I have nothing else to react with the zinc, so I'm going to have excess zinc. So the limiting reactant is the silver nitrate, because I run out of that first. How do I know I run out of that first? Because I make, as soon as it, once all of this is converted into silver, I have 1.59 grams, which is less than um, what I get in the first part.